This time on Square Roots. When magical beings die, their bodies slowly transform into the ore known as chrism. Even the legendary dragons, whose might shook the world, have in death become a source of energy in the form of chrism. No one knows how or why the mighty dragons became extinct. This tale is dedicated to the dragons. Breath of Fire 3! Shut up. Jim, the next time you miss an episode, I'm officially taking over as perma-host. Hey everyone, and welcome to Square Roots, the classic RPG podcast. My name is Jim Banks. I am joined by Matthew Van Zant. It's me, your host, Matthew Van Zant. (laughs) John Bunyan Brandon. Johnny. Oh, Johnny Bunyan Brandon, excuse me. Thank you very much. And Vanessa. I'm Vanessa. And this is a podcast where we play and talk about your favorite classic RPGs, one chonker at a time. Uh, this week, we're starting our Breath of Fire 3 series. Oh, boy. Right? Breath of the Fire most, 3. Woo! This game is nothing special. Uh, I mean, it's been <laughs> on the list for several years, and yeah. we said People this year excited. we were going to try a bunch of new series that we had not tried before. Uh, so we're, we're giving old Breath of Fire mm-hmm. a shot. Someone on mm-hmm. the Twitter said that it was their favorite game and they were super excited to play along with us. Yeah. Thank you, Twitter person. Jim? Yeah. How can you explain? I, we need you to explain for the listeners your resurrection. My resurrection? Because last week on the show, I claimed to have murdered you. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I think like Matthew gave me some kind of Florida virus hey! that... That almost killed me were it not for the magic of my fast healing body. Ooh. Yeah. I think you just missed me so much that your body became physically ill once I was gone. I had withdrawal and I was just huddled in a corner of my apartment shivering and sweating and crying. Mm -hmm. It also may have been alcohol withdrawal because there was a (laughs) lot of alcohol. Matthew (laughs) did kill you and got you fried by lightning, but... Your someone ate your appendix and they turned into you. <laughs> oh, that would be cool, right? Yeah, but now you have to grapple with the question: Are you the original Jim, or are you just a copy? My appendix is like that that demon worm from Jason Goes to Hell that people devour to become Jason Voorhees. That's the joke. Why would someone <laughs> eat a demon worm? I wanted to be more explicit about it, John. I see a lot of people being like, if you take a transporter, it doesn't make you you. It makes a copy of you that thinks you're you. And they go on and on about the philosophical implications. I don't care. Give me a transporter. If it thinks yeah, it's man. me, it's me. If I me. never have to walk anywhere again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's a pretty big deficit. Is it uh, killing you every time? Uh, <laughs> worth it, John. Yeah. It's like that one of those magician movies that came out that you remember that year where two magician movies came out yes. and one of them was about that. Yes, the and prestige. one of them was crap. The illusionist. Oh, I hated that movie so much. That movie sucked. Thanks I a lot, Edward Norton. Either one. Oh, the but prestige I did is see real good. A movie. Oh, is this your level up? Are we leveling I mean, it up could now? Be if somebody wanted to transition us into that segment, Jim hasn't like even hey, told us do. what we do. Jim, let's do. Let's do the thing in the show where we talk about what we did, <laughs> like since last time we did no, this thing on the show. No, and first it's time level you have up. to say what show is. We're on. I did. Oh, did we? The Square Root Show. Yeah, we're the. <laughs> this is the Square Root Show. <laughs> the only <laughs> classic RPG podcast ever. Yeah. Past, present, future. Let's level That's up. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> let's. Hey guys, let's level up. Hey, nobody ever responded to me, so I guess we're not. Do we not want to talk about Spider Man? We do, we should not if we're we, not we, going to. We've scheduled a bonus episode about it. Let's do a big fat bonus on it. Okay. 
I think it's going to be great because Vanessa has a weird thing for the (laughs) floppy-haired Spider-Man boy. It's not weird. I just want to adopt and marry him. No, boy. Did you say adopt and marry him? We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that when we talk about Spider-Man. And (laughs) we'll talk about scheduling that right after we record this episode. But for now. Right after these messages. (laughs) Who wants to go first? Who wants to level up first? I'll go first. I got a couple of things. Who else wants to go first? (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Go ahead, Matthew. He's vaping. (gasps) That's the watermelon vape. Oh. My goodness. All right. I got two things that I can talk about. I know you three love it when I talk about anime. Your favorite genre. Mm-hmm. 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 Tetsuo! Everybody knows that I watched <laughs> Neon Genesis Evangelion recently, and it was fucking terrible. Everyone knows. Mm-hmm. 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 So, <laughs> uh, I decided to watch another angsty teen boys in giant robot show called Gu- a Gundam, Iron Blooded Orphans. And orphans. everybody knows. I don't really like a Gundam very much. Yeah, everyone I hate watches. orphans. Is that show? I, is that show canon? Matthew doesn't like Gundam very much. That is canon. Is I do not like Gundam very much, but I always watch them because they are pretty. Anyway, uh, I watched. I started watching Iron Blooded Orphans, and it's pretty good. I actually like it a lot. I'm very surprised. So, if there's any anime nerds out there, Jones and for some robots, go watch that. But what I really want to talk about is a game that I bought. This weekend. It's called Bloodstained. What? Ritual of the Night. Has anybody heard of this game? No. Raise your hand. Yes. Is this the, is this the, is this the, what do you call it? The crowdfunded one? Kickstarted. Kickstarted, yeah. Uh, Actually, if you would mind vaping for a minute, I want to pull it up on Wiki. Kenji Inafune made a lot of the really good Castlevania games, like... Uh, he made Symphony of the Night, and I think Rondo of Blood, and then all those weird GBA Game and Boy DS ones. ones. Mm-hmm. I've never played a Castlevania. I am not good at platformers. They're like the, especially the Inafune ones are really more like Metroid. They're not super platformy. They're more about like grinding and get leveling up your Alucard or whoever. You could say that Koji. Igorashi. Oh, not Kenji Inafune? Who am I thinking of? Koji Igorashi. Igorashi. You can say that Koji Igorashi is probably the father of the Metroidvania style. Uh, and his new game was, is a bloodstained ritual of the night was kickstarted. And, uh, overfunded, one of the early crazy overfunding ones. Let's see, which successfully raised more than $5.5 million from backers. Oh, heck you who? Inafune was Mega Man slash Mighty Number no. 9 guy. So I was mixing up my former 8 bit designer guys who get, went and did a Kickstarter. But this one was, that one was bad. What about this one? Uh, unlike, uh, his attempt at a Kickstarter game. <clears throat> Igorashi's attempt, though a couple of years late, is pretty fantastic so far. Uh, the reviews have been all pretty great along the lines of, if you like Symphony of the Night, you're going to really like this game. And I do! <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And John, I think that you in particular of the group here would enjoy it as well. It's a real kind of classic, uh, it's just a real classic one of those games. I mean, it's, it is it is definitely Castlevania with a different coat of paint on. I don't like the main character of the game is a young woman who is um, very kind of sexualized uh, and uh, maybe not sexualized, but, but yeah, very sexualized and, you know, short skirt and low top and, um, and you know, that's not my favorite thing in a game. It kind of bugs me. Uh, but other than that, it's fun as hell. Uh, has Vanessa seen the cat demon enemy in this game? 
I don't think so. Uh, I will uh, send you while, while Matt is talking. I will send you a clip of that. Okay, that's like oh, the, you, you sent that a while ago, right? Yeah, I think so. Maybe uh, I just don't remember. Is it a cute kitty? Uh, yes, and the um, because I find the art style of the game is kind of hideous compared to Symphony of the Night. Which is, it's which is not, a bit of a problem. She doesn't... It's the main character, and a lot of the human characters don't look good. The castle itself does look good. Uh, and it does a great job using modern graphics to create depth, lots of depth, uh, and twists and turns uh, in the background that make you feel more like you are running through a, you know, a 3D space. It's really... It is pretty in that way. Um it's got a lot of systems to it. There's, you know, your classic RPG uh ish weapons and upgrades. Uh and it's it adds in a lot of stuff from later Castlevania games. If you played any of the DS or G- even the Game Boy Castlevania games that came out after Symphony of the Night, uh it uses a lot of systems from those like capturing souls of monsters and using them as spells and um it's just super fun. Uh, my one big complaint is that I'm like five hours in, I think, and I do not have the double jump yet. And that annoys me. Gotta give me that double jump fast, game. All games should know that. Gotta give me that double jump real fast. There was shit at the very beginning of the game that was like, hey, you're gonna need to double jump to get to here. And I was like, well, then I should get that soon. And now I'm super far away from there and just really want to double jump. <laughs> Vanessa, check the second video I, I sent right, you. Let's, Okey we'll, dokey. We'll send. We'll take a moment to watch this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is this somebody's cat, John? I'm no, sure. You know, like, I, I find it's a little distracting in this game when you have those paintings that are obviously, like, backers. Yes, but you don't see those in, like. Oh, look at the kitty! <gasps> Baby! You don't. Oh. Vanessa, don't keep watching. Turn it off now. You're not gonna oh, like what happens. Oh, he's gonna swat him. Oh, he's gonna swat him. Oh, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> this is a horrible game. <laughs> oh, that no. That cat is so much like Porky, when, especially when Porky's up on her bed, which is a, a loft bed, and yet yeah, try to pet her. She does that exact <laughs> face. That's funny. Oh, baby. I hate it. Aww. Matt, well, play a horrible uh, anyway, game. that is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, and it is a lot of fun no. if you are a fan of the Metroidvania genre. I know there's been a ton lately. Don't do there it. There have been. Uh, it, you know, it used to be there was few and far between, and now there have been legitimately like a dozen indie like Metroidvanias is- that have been excellent in the last couple of years there's been there remember like right around 2010 there's a big rush of them after that after shadow complex then there's like outlat or outcast and a whole uh-huh. bunch of other ones and now they've come back i think they might be better now than they were back then i think those ones are. weren't that I, great i think you're right a lot, even shadow complex wasn't that great yeah uh, but there's been a ton of great ones in the last couple of years so many that i haven't even played them all yeah, there's a one that just came out about a cat that's like a ro- in a ro- mech suit that looks really cute, and I want to play oh, Celeste and Hollow I Knight. Seen that. See now, Celeste I consider more of a that's a puzzle platformer. That's not a that's not quite the same thing. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to monopolize the whole time, so let's move along. Vanessa, yeah, would you like to tell me how you leveled up? Sure. Uh, I finished a game called Detroit Become Human. Oh, no. <laughs> Was it good? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do a versus or a instant classic on it next month? Yep. I think okay. it would be an instant classic because it's a new game. Newish yeah. game. Mm-hmm. I think a versus is like uh, at least the previous generation. Okay. It can be whatever Except we for the quiet man. Be. Oh, uh, that's right. See? We played it too fast and loose, and now they're the same thing. <laughs> Did we ever We should just start calling if... it Square Roots versus Instant Classic. Yeah. There we go. Is The Quiet Man an instant classic? So is yes. this better than The Quiet Man? I mean, <laughs> yes, but you would kind of have to be. Like, The Quiet Man is barely a video game. 
Although, I suppose you might say the same for this. It's more of an hey, interactive film. What? Do you all remember how The Quiet Man was a Square Enix game? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I, I mean, I usually forget that we have played it, but sometimes yes. it pops back into my <laughs> head and I just start laughing out loud to myself because <laughs> we played that game and that was yeah. trash. It makes me laugh when I hear other people like podcasts or uh, writers on, you know, blogs talk about it i'm always like oh yeah that game that was a huge piece of shit remember the combat oh my god remember when he like did the flip over that guy in the kitchen and the little cutscene? that was so stupid (laughs) the like vaguely arab looking guy who he just vaulted over for no reason (laughs) (laughs) remember how in combat he sometimes would just like teleport to the other side of the room for no reason Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) oh my god Ah, what a great game yeah so uh detroit become human it's free on playstation plus remember how he gained superpowers because he wanted to have sex with his mom girlfriend so bad (laughs) do you remember that and his dad had superpowers too and his dad had superpower or his brother it wasn't his brother no it was was his dad dad. that was his papa man wasn't his dad the cop Yeah. yeah Yeah, but he was also, like, the bad guy, the kidnapper. Yeah, spoilers mm-hmm. for a quiet man. Yeah, spoilers <sighs> for a quiet man. I can't even remember. <laughs> so, we, in we conclusion, should... <laughs> Detroit is better than the quiet man. <laughs> I, I hope guess. that Detroit is as good as Quiet Heavy Man Rain? and Hattopole. Breath of Fire 3. Because those, I think, are my two favorite episodes we've ever done. <laughs> Vanessa, is it going to be that good? I have a lot to say about it. Ooh. But shouldn't we hold that for yep. our special episode? Mm-hmm. We should also go back and play the new re- released uh, DLC for Quiet Man where it has sound this time. So we can really get the whole story. No, thank you. Remember no. how that was a big feature? <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, but no, I, I don't think so. Once you finish the game, you can play it again, this time with sound. Oh, God. Man people out there in the world make things sometimes they don't work that's all i have to say about that jim <laughs> how did you Ooh. level up and uh, i did a lot of stuff since i talked to you guys yeah, last time if i may we we heard matt's interpretation of your uh mm-hmm. fourth of july uh brocation but if you could yeah. give us your side that would be very helpful Matthew came and visited me over the Fourth of July holiday, and we had we had um we had a lot of fun. We went. I met his family. Ooh, that was his, fun. His sweet grandma. She was very sweet. And we drank a lot of alcohol. That's a given. Anytime Matthew is in town, we uh, went and saw a Coheed and Cambria concert. We did. We kind of thought it was gonna. I kind of thought it was more. Let's go see a Mastodon concert, but then they it's- were kind of boring. Yeah, you couldn't really tell. They didn't really seem excited to be doing anything on stage. Not a lot of stage presence with those dudes. Hmm. Which one? We Mastodon played games with Mastodon. a man we called the Smoke Bastard, so that was fun. The Smoke Bastard? Do you Why does that the, ring a bell? Uh, the man that was not letting people smoke on the lawn, oh, even yeah. though the other security <laughs> people were like, yeah, you can smoke there. This one man yeah. was like watching whatever it was. What was Jim smoking? I wasn't smoking. Oh, okay. He was just like trying to get everybody to not smoke, and so everyone around us was calling him the smoke bastard. <laughs> which was I was pretty doing good. that thing I do where I feel like being an asshole, and every time he turned around, I was blowing big puffy clouds <laughs> and then dropping the thing back in my pocket so that you did not know where they came from. <laughs> and uh, let's see, I bought all new tires while Matthew was here because I got a flat when That's I right, was I going to pick him up at the airport. Tire. Yeah, we had to put a donut on my car so we could <laughs> drive around. Wow. You know what happens, man. Sometimes your tires got to get replaced. Yeah. And the night before Matthew came, uh, I took my daughter to her first, like, rock, rock concert. Mm-hmm. That's rad. Uh, we went to, we went to, like, a small show at the House of Blues in Dallas and saw a band called Charlie Bliss. Ooh. They're like an indie alt rock kind of power pop band, and they were awesome. And my daughter had an amazing time. That's great. Yeah, she said it was her best, her 
the best birthday present ever. Aw, you did it. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Um, started a new job at work. That's pretty cool. Um, that's pretty much it. How about you, John? Well, uh, first of all, I have watched. Uh, I started watching a show called BoJack Horseman. Really? I tried that like four years ago and couldn't get in, or five years ago maybe, and couldn't get into it because it was too depressing. Mm -hmm. But now that I know who Paul F. Tompkins is, I Mm -hmm. find that I have an avenue into enjoying it. Mm, That makes sense. Because I love Paul F. Tompkins. Who does sing? uh, Hold on. You said, now I know who Paul F. Tompkins is, as if this is a recent discovery for you? Well, no, I. but between 2014 and now, I had, because uh, I hadn't heard him in anything before. And now I've listened to lots of that show where he's a paranormal investigator, and lots of that show where uh, he does improv. Mm-hmm. And it's fun. Spontaneous nation. Anyway, so uh, my friend and <laughs> listener R.J. Watson, you might know from the Facebook group, says I'm Mr. Peanut Butter, and I feel like that's a little mean. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Do you watch the show? Mm-mm. He's not He's super very bright. eager to please uh, and very stupid. Yes, <laughs> so, I don't think you're a Mr. <laughs> Peanut Butter, John. Oh, good. Uh, and also, uh, I, I reactivated my account for Final Fantasy fourteen. I bought, I didn't want to subscribe, so I bought a game card online and, uh, use that so that it won't renew without my permission. Cause like, I think I had an account on there for eight months before realizing it. So, <laughs> uh, cause I bought that game originally in, in 2010 and it was garbage or 2011. Why it, are you playing it now? Because it's fun, and all my friends are playing it. And I'm having fun now doing dungeons and stuff. I'm level 20, 21 maybe, and the dungeons are pretty neat. And it's much more fun when you're playing with someone, because the opening quests... uh, I've done the opening like 20 times or something, or maybe 10 times, and it's so boring. But once you get into the dungeons, it actually gets the game gets a lot better. And uh, my my one pro tip is, if you want to play this game, skip... All non-necessary quests. Only do your class quests and do the main story quests, because the side missions are garbage and a waste of time. Huh. No. So don't do the side missions. Pro so tip. the two people that I know who play Final Fantasy, John Brandon and my mother. Ooh, and, and Mr. Uh, Chad Schubert. Mozart. And Chad yeah. Mozart. Oh, and, and uh, Bobo Hotep. Colin plays it. Yeah. You can watch him stream it as Bobo Hotep. Hey. Oh. Nice yeah. guy plug. All right. So that's uh that's it for my level up. You guys ready for some quest log? Heck yeah. Are you ready for some quest log? Sure am. I feel like we're playing uh we're playing a like a kind of a standard generic ish JRPG, so we have to call it the quest log this time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Call it like the Dragon Tales, Dragon Diaries. No thanks. I think yeah. I think it really is a quest log kind of game. This is, I think, mm-hmm. the most generic JRPG we've played since Secret Grandia. of Mana. Well, Grandia was weird. Wow, Grandia this is was weird. right in line, I think, with Grandia. Okay, I feel like mm-hmm. this way, is very this, similar this to like Sakoden use... and Wild Arms. All these games about anime boys and girls who do anime boy and girl stuff. Yes. This game could use some Grandia-style shitty voice acting, I think. Mm -hmm. Just throwing that out there. I kind of don't mind that it doesn't have it, (laughs) because then you can skip through it pretty fast. Yeah, I'm glad that the game is not significantly worse than it actually is as well. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's let's get into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, game opens. (laughs) Sorry, John, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. You, I love it when you do this. Oh, okay. (laughs) <laughs> Do you want to mine? We Man, start... I really want to get a beer, but I also really want to talk about this. I'm going to hurt. So we uh, start opening. Uh, all right, we open on a little wolf man 
with a big backpack. His name is Gary. Yeah. <laughs> Gary. Gary is a super cute wolf man. He's got uh like a hazelnut color fur. He's uh wearing over like denim overalls. He's working in a mine mm-hmm. with his best friend, Mogu. Yeah. Mogu's a mole man. Mogu's a mole man with like big old claws and a bandana. And uh yeah, they're they are best friends. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's are, not clear, though, if they're miners or more adventurer types at first. I wasn't quite uh, in the beginning. It doesn't uh, really specify their roles, I think. Well, it, it does seem like they have a lot of experience with mining. Like uh, Mogu has seen this dragon encased in what he would call Chisholm. Chrism? Was Chrism. Chrism. Chrism before. Mm-hmm. Uh, C-H-R-S-Y-M. Yeah, that, this this little baby dragon's just covered in chrism. Just covered in chrism. Is it chrism or is it chrism? Chrism. 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 This dragon is just dripping with chrism. Why would it be chrism? Chrism. Chrism. Chrism? The H is chrism. clearly silent. And uh, Gary's like, is that an egg? Vanessa, is it an egg? Uh, No. It's chrism. It doesn't resemble an egg at all. No. It's, I mean, it's sort of a lump, but, Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see the dragon inside of it. Uh, Oh, I thought they were wondering if the dragon was an egg, but now I realize they're talking about the whole thing. Yeah. Kind of like a chrysalis or a chrysalis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They think that the little dragon they can see is like a, a fetus inside an egg. Oh, okay. An embryo. An embryo, yes. That's right. Yes. Oh, so maybe the thing they blew up, they're saying, is the egg? But it's not, according to Vanessa's opening crawl narration. No. It's chrism. Yeah, it's chrism. It's crusty chrism. Oh, gotcha. Chrism. Okay. It's dried, so, so it's very hard. <laughs> yeah, stiff. Crunchy. Mm-hmm. Crunchy is the problem. Crunchy, yeah. crusty yeah. chrism. <laughs> Trying to get chrism off your fur. Wait, no. Ooh. <laughs> I don't think dragons have fur, traditionally. Well, but, but Gary and Mogu do. That's they true. Don't wanna get, they don't want to yeah. get their chrism anywhere near. Well, they aren't yeah. handling Gary, the chrism. Gary specifically is, his fur is matted with chrism. <laughs> well, but they're so, excited to get this chrism. Yeah, they want to... To, to like really heat up this chrism and, and get it just exploding everywhere, just chrism covering <laughs> every wall of this mine. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. <laughs> so Gary and Mo. Let me stop you there. <laughs> uh, they, they wire up a lot of dynamite. Mm-hmm. Uh, who would you say is initiating this chrism session? So. Uh, Chrism session. I'd say that Mogu is kind of in charge because Gary seems a little bit uh, less clear about what's going on. Mogu Mm -hmm. sets up the explosives and Gary is just like, well, what the heck is this, Mogu? But I think that Mogu is the more experienced one. Although, that said, in the sort of very introduction, it seems like uh, Mogu is sort of questioning what they're doing there. And Gary knows a little bit more history about dragons. Right. So I think maybe Gary is kind of the the uh, instigator of their adventures, and Mogu is the the task man. He gets things okay. done. Okay. So Gary's the idea man. Gary's the yeah. idea Gary's man. Gary's the brains, and Mogu's the brawn. Well, I think they're kind of and balanced, which one though. has the chrism all over them? Both of them. They both like. Oh. They're both about to just get covered in chrism. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just bla- really blasted. Yeah. We ran Jim out. <laughs> Mogu sets up uh, some explosives. The listeners are doing the same fucking thing right now. <laughs> Sorry, Vanessa. Well, they better get ready for the long adventures of Mogu and Gary because I think we're going to mm-hmm. do several episodes on this game. Oh, yeah. And we love Mogu and Gary. Yep. They're adorable. Best pals. Their attack animations are very cute. Mm-hmm. So, Mogu and Gary uh, explode this chrism everywhere, releasing the dragon. But 
what they weren't expecting is the dragon yawns and is alive. Mm-hmm. It's a cutie little baby dragon. It's just a little booby. But mm-hmm. uh, then Mogu makes a fatal error. What? Yep. Fatal? Oh, I mean, you know, just a, a serious error. Let's put it that way. What, ha- what happened? Well, Mogu decided to hit the dragon on the head. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that triggers our first uh, player-controlled battle. Um, so what are, Mo- like, as we control Gary and Mogu, what are our abilities? Well, see, that's the thing. Turns out, we ain't Gary. <gasps> and it turns out, we ain't Mogu. Oh, no. No, we are. The dragon. What? Mm-hmm. And, and, hang on. Anybody want to <laughs> take a bet right now? You start this game covered in chrism. Mm-hmm. I bet you end this game covered in chrism. I hope you I'm. S- well, I will 100 percent end this game covered in chrism. <laughs> I, guarantee, I guarantee it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so uh, I guess, do you have a way of parlaying with uh, with Gary and Mogu? Sort of. Um, you do hit them uh, mm-hmm. just a little bit. Uh, uh, just like your your hand, your claw. Uh, but it's sort of like a hey now, hey hey, cut that out. Hey, you hit me. You know, like like if you swipe at a cat, the cat's gonna swipe back at you. It's not its fault. Mm-hmm. Like uh, in Bloodstained. Yeah. Uh, and then mm-hmm. uh, they they do hit the dragon again, uh, at which point the dragon decides to speak with them. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, dragons speak fire. Oh, no. Yeah. I guess that's why it's called Breath of Fire, because the dragon's just, like, exasperated and mm-hmm. uh, lets out sort of a retaliatory exhale mm-hmm. kind of a sigh yeah just kind sort of, of like a, a come on sigh. <sighs> so do gary and mogu get like comedically a little bit bit of burnt faces and they're like yeah. oh no oh it's yeah it's funny um <laughs> they do look like barbecue pigs uh, uh and oh. they lie dead on the ground <laughs> <laughs> this game is so cute. How could there be charred corpses? Well, uh, they sure are dead. Uh, you can get a melted sword from one of their bodies. <laughs> Why would I do that? Well, just, you know, as a souvenir of your times with oh. Gary and Mogu, because they are over. Oh, They no. did. I wanted to eat them, because they did look delicious, but that was not an option. <laughs> they look very crispy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, but they did. You want a hot dog with some mole sauce? Hey! Oh, hey! Oh! <laughs> you murdered him, though. So, we get to play as the dragon? A murderous, insane dragon. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that's quite what's happening here. I think it's more yeah, that it's a baby. Yeah, the dragon never instigates a battle. Uh, in fact, you can walk around and talk to some miners. Uh, some of There's them- one miner who claims to have peed his pants. Yes. Ooh, another game with pant peeing. Uh, there's one yeah. miner who is just on all fours with his head covered up by his hands and his little butt is shaken back and forth. Mm-hmm. That's the pee-pee man. Mm-hmm. He's very mm-hmm. scared. There's one guy who doesn't turn around and just talks to you. He's like, uh, sure is a lot of commotion out there. I wonder what that's about. <laughs> well, see you later. And, and you can, there's a couple of optional areas where, or at least one where you can avoid, you don't have to go down there and murderify these people, but you can go down there and reduce them to ash. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Because people mm-hmm. keep rushing at you, shouting like, I'm not afraid of you, and mm-hmm. and then you do breathe on them. But again, it's mm-hmm. just breath. Like, I breathe. I'm breathing right now. It's not my mm-hmm. fault. I guess I could stop if I wanted to. Let's do that. No, no, no. no. You need to breathe. So you make your way through the mine, and then eventually this biggin, this biggin's like, hey, I can stop you uh, and your murder rampage. Uh, but And you are about to, like, do a big breath of fire on the big dude, but then a voice says, hey, maybe don't. 
Yeah, and you your your little dragon character turns and looks at the big <laughs> green dragon skeleton behind you. Mm-hmm. And then as that happens, a man swings a giant crane into your dragon body and knocks you out. Are you okay, Vanessa? Yeah, it turns out breathing is better than not. Mm-hmm. God damn it. <laughs> So you die, and then Gary and Mogu come back, and it's off on Gary and Mogu Dragon Killer nope, Adventure. You're on a right? train. Yeah, it's a real Casey Jr. kind of situation. So when you're on the train, are you already what? a boy or are you still a dragon? Uh, it's a dragon. You're still okay. a dragon. Uh, you're just like on this little train with the cage. It's like one car train. Uh, you're sitting back there rattling along the track. And uh, for a while, nothing happens until you realize you can, out of this world, rock the uh, cage. Or if you'd like, Final Fantasy IX, rock this cage. Mm -hmm. Do you rock the cage in Final Fantasy IX? Yes. There is a sequence where, I think it's right before your your first Kuja fight, I want to say. And you have to rock a cage back and forth. I think you're trapped in there with Steiner, maybe? Yeah, and you got to swing into the wall. Yes. Oh, I remember that. That was, I think, one of our very first mini games Mm -hmm. we ever talked Mm -hmm. about. Oh, man. Foot times. Uh, So we fall out of the cage, and the cage breaks, and we are found... Well, I guess it doesn't... It doesn't explicitly state that we are found, but... The dragon is never found, but a boy is found uh, naked in the woods, unconscious. By a cat man. By a cat man and a little purple-haired boy. Oh, I thought that was a girl. Is that a boy? I thought oh, Tipo was a girl. A girl? is a boy. They eventually what? use masculine what? pronouns with Tipo. Nope. Yeah, Vanessa Tipo's on my side, definitely right? a girl. What? What? Tipo's, Tipo's a boy, a dude. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Tipo's a boy. Wow. This changes everything. Yeah. I don't want to play this I'm game looking anymore. at the wiki right Maybe now. Tipo is a purple haired orphan and Ray's partner in crime. Mm-hmm. Shortly after Ray's escape from the authorities, Tipo and Ray find him alone and injured in the forest. Yep. The two agree, but it, hold on. I just said it. Find him alone. Hold on. Hold on. Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Ryu is a boy. Ryu a dragon. Um, yeah. It's, well, it refers to Tipo as a little brother. Ray's yeah. little brother. Yes. Ray's little brother. And also this, this uh, fandom. I'm not fucking buying it. Well, In the from the Prima strategy guide, it says Ray's little brother Tipo is also an orphan who wanders the countryside with Ray stealing whatever he can to survive. Although his actions may seem rash and impulsive at times, he always means well. I mean, how about that, does, guys? I, I'm the, as a non-gender essentialist, I think it's fine to, that Tipo d- doesn't seem super mask or femme. Tipo is just no, Tipo. actually. It's a bit like Neither do Sprite. any of the characters, really, except for Bunyan. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't disagree with that. I, I'm just surprised, because Tipo is uh, traditionally a woman's name. So, <laughs> anyway, we're this cat man now. Uh, cat man is trying to get some food. There's a piggy, uh, but the piggy does run away. Uh, and mm. so, cat... So what does cat man do? Well, cat man <laughs> decides cat to... Cat man do? Well... <laughs> Piggy run away because... Loud crash. Loud yes. crash. So Catman goes to investigate, uh-huh. and there he finds a... Oh, Batman yeah, he a has name. a name, and that name is... Ray. Ray. Mm-hmm. Uh, he finds a, a good new meal, which is a, a tasty bit of boy butt. Little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on now. No, I'm just saying he finds this, uh, what he immediately interprets it as an orphan... Like, there is a, a <laughs> naked child in the woods, and he's just like, eh, must be an orphan. And, uh, yeah. Next to a cage, there was a loud crash, and he walked through the woods and found a naked boy laying next to a broken cage and said, huh, Yep. An orphan. And uh, then he was going to leave it, uh, but he changes his mind and uh, says, well, I can't really afford to feed another mouth, but uh, you're coming with me anyway. He slings this naked, unconscious orphan over his shoulder and takes him home. Mm -hmm. Uh, And at home, there is Tipo, who apparently is a little boy. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, Tipo uh, wonders what uh, Ray has brought him to eat, uh, sees that it is a little boy, and uh, they prepare to chow down. 
Oh, no. Hey, quick, quick question. Did you guys keep the name Ryu for the character? Yeah. No. You did? I, I named did. him. John, what did you name your character? In my, my tradition of naming characters after cars, he is Rondo. <laughs> I named mine Plop. <laughs> Excellent work. He seems like a plop. I'm oh, always no, afraid anyway. that I'll forget the canon name if I don't use it, and then uh, I'll be confused on the podcast. You wouldn't want that. No. I just like to use this, the name. I, I always have. I like using I've the name. I've never liked naming them like Assbutt or something like that. That, Ass that butt. humor just <laughs> has never resonated with yeah. me. Ass I butt. want to escape into a magical fantasy world. I don't want to be fart knocker wandering around the land of <laughs> Dickwad. <laughs> Dickwad. I also don't like Mad Libs. <laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> fart knocker wandering around the Can land I point out Dickwad. that this is... <laughs> Can I point out that this is in the classic Square Root uh, tradition, apparently a game mm-hmm. about a bunch of fucking garbage orphans who live in the woods and fucking steal mm-hmm. from the neighborhood. They're perfectly fitting yeah. the description of so, garbage uh, orphans. These two garbage orphans, Ray and Tipo, decide not to actually <laughs> eat the third. Uh, instead, they are going to take him to bed. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? No! No! What? No! What? Put him to bed. Okay. Put yeah. They're to gonna bed. put him to bed. Which thing? This do. is where you, that you get a dream sequence. Mm-hmm. 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 A fun mm-hmm. one with like an angel lady and a a naggy dude. Yeah. Yeah. Naggy dude is like you're the same as me. Mm-hmm. You must understand. They're pitiful and pathetic. Yeah. You say it, Daddy. Wow. <laughs> I'm worried about you, Vanessa. <laughs> then, a, then a fairy shows up, and she has boobs for days. Mm-hmm. And she's like, my precious little boy, I love you. I'm just assuming <laughs> that this is the, the the father and mother of this little boy dragon. Oh, you think? I do. I think oh, that one of these people is the bad guy. That's what I think. Neggy guy? Maybe it's maybe it's Fairy Lady. Maybe she's a bad guy. I think that I forgot this scene even took place. I don't think that uh, them being the parents of this little orphan negates them being the bad guy. No. So, uh, cut to the next day. Uh, Tipo and you and Ray decide to do a little raid on uh, the town. McNeil. Well, first you do some the, thieving. Uh, news hour. Yeah. You wake up and uh, Tipo and Ray are gone. Yeah, and yeah, and you can go like you're in pajamas still. Um, you can go like raid their house. There's a couple things you can dig out of their house and their cupboards. Um, and then you can go talk to some friendly enemies right outside of your little tree mm-hmm. fort. There's a little goblin and a little slime guy. It's some cute goo. pajamas. It's like a little dress and it's too big. Yeah, I'm like a little nightgown. I like that they kind of have their own flavor of the Dragon Quest slimes, but these are called goos with little floating eyeballs above them. Uh, so then you do wander into town where you find uh, Ray and Tipo, and they are not having a good time of it because everyone hates them. Well, they are trying to steal from everybody, right? Yes. And the town is very poor and lacking food because of monster attacks. Mm -hmm. Do they say that initially, that there's just monster attacks? And I thought they say poor harvest at first. Oh, that's right. Poor harvest. That's what the people fishing outside of town say. Yeah. So everybody is really low on food because of the poor harvest. So you decide to go steal some food from these people. And I think you raid the... No, no, that's after they decide to like let you help them steal. They raid the the uh, weapon and armor shop for you. Yes, because mm-hmm. they uh, they say that they need to get you out of those pajamas. <laughs> There's something particularly delightful about. I found this child in the woods today. He was naked, and dogs were trying to eat him. I took him home and fed him and put clothes on him. Then I armed him and took him out with me on the road. To rob mm-hmm. people, yeah, your your characters decide to post up on the road and and try to mug people. How's that go? 
Um, not very well. They send your little baby Ryu character to mug a giant bearded man named Bunyan. Oh my! Um, and it doesn't work. Bunyan is is yeah. yeah. <laughs> they sort of just push uh, Ryu down the hill, and he slams <laughs> into Bunyan yeah. and falls over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Bunyan immediately thinks that you're trying to rob him. He's like, what are you doing? Trying to rob me? Well, let me tell you, there are these two <laughs> kids around here, and they try to rob everyone, and you don't want to end up like that. No, sir. So you better get out of here and stop trying to rob people. My name's Bunyan. And then Ray's like, well, that Bunyan guy's not at his house. Let's go rob him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bunyan, like- by the way, is a big bearded muscle bear, and uh, I guess my husband for the game. So, uh, <laughs> congratulate me on my marriage to Bunyan. Congratulations. Hey, hey, John. Yep. I have a feeling that's going to work out about as well for you as your good friends Gary and Morg, or whatever his no, name was. Oh, don't say that. Don't you dare curse my precious Bunyan. Do you think he's named after the foot ailment or Paul Bunyan? Why not both? Both, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, they we decide to go uh, steal from Bunyan's house. You get there, and by the way, I did some grinding around this time. You can walk around. So there's a there's like a little world map, and a little exclamation point icon will pop up uh, over your character's head when you can like uh, uh, enter an area and fight, like do random battles. Oh, is that what that so is? I- yeah, yeah, so I I did that and did a did a lot of grinding. Yeah, there's section. a lot of there's always a, a treasure chest or a bag. So there's always some sort of prize for doing one. Uh, I did that as well, and I also went a little too far into the mountains, but I just kind of spent some time grinding. Uh, and now is also a good time to go town and actually, if you do that and you got some money, mm-hmm. go to town and buy yourself some shit. I did. Yes. Um, now might be a good time to talk about something that we've neglected to talk about so far, which is the mechanics of the game. Ooh. It's turn-based. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is. The combat is turn-based. I love Ryu's animation, though. When you start a fight, uh, a random battle. Is it random or are they on the field? It's random, They're right? random, yeah. Um... When you start a fight, uh, he digs in his pocket for his sword, and he pulls it out and points it behind him and, like, cowers. Yeah, he's, like, so waving his sword wildly without while looking away, like he really doesn't want to be fighting. Uh, the sprite art, I think when people say they really like this game, I'm assuming part of it is the sprite art is delightful. I, it looks like the same artists who do, like, Darkstalkers and some of the Street Fighter, like Street Fighter 3. Like, it's really got a fighting game kind of style to it. There's a lot of beautiful animation, like uh, uh, Ray's attack is almost like a dragon punch when he, he attacks. There's a lot of just, it's really gorgeous. Sprite work is <laughs> That's excellent. An excellent point. And this is a Capcom RPG. Yes. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Nice. So that's why I'm thinking it's, it's the fighting team people kind of putting their fighting to an RPG. And yeah, the sprite work's some of the best I've ever seen. Yeah. It's really pretty and good to look at. Unlike the last game we played like this, that piece of ugly shit. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think with Grandia, the problem was that it's like it would zoom in and out and then like become a mess of ugly mess of pixels. Yeah. Yeah. It was very like polygonal, too. There wasn't like that smoothness that came with a lot of the character and models. The dungeon designs were janky. awful. They were so long yeah. and so hard to see where you were going. But this is a nice, cute game after Fallout. It's a good uh, palette cleanser. It is. I kind of thought that's what kind of was my thought. This is kind of a tr- like a real throwback traditional PS1 RPG, but not a Final Fantasy. Like there's so many of these and people love them. Uh, you know, they're not all. What was that god awful one we did? I think it's the one that Jim quit the show on. Skies of Arcadia? No. What did we do? Grandia? No. No, it was that one that was you said you guys said had like Kingdom Hearts esque Oh, Rogue combat. Galaxy. Rogue yes. Galaxy. Yeah. Rogue Galaxy. That's another one that we did because it had been on the list for a long time, and we, we all already owned it because we had all planned on doing it yeah. for so long. And it was 
this is better than Rogue Galaxy. I do find the map designs are like it's it's like Grandia is too zoomed in, so you can only see like a tiny, tiny little chunk of the map when you're walking around, and I hate that. It did take me a long time to find Bunyan's cabin. In fact, I had to pull up a guide, but I fucked up and went. I like I wasn't I wasn't going near anywhere near the right place. I was going like trying to go up into the mountains and shit. Like I was not doing the right thing. Right. Uh, but hang on, I had something. Uh, Bunyan. <laughs> my husband uh it's uh otherwise it's it's yeah it's pretty standard rpg though right like it is there's nothing like they haven't introduced i'm sure stuff will come but there are no um there's really no surprises to the the combat mechanics at this point i liked that uh tipo has a spell and when you cast it she starts charging it her little sprite and yeah. she like kind of it's cute it's a great it's, it's he's he's like whole i don't know whatever it's it looks, it looks like like uh like tipo's charging a fireball yeah yeah but i will say uh d- we are very early into the game so i'm a little it's a little early to be like well this is not fucking rogue galaxy because it could turn into some rogue galaxy or grandia style bullshit once we get deep into these dungeons you know we never talked about our histories with the game oh yeah, oh, yeah. I I've oh. played Breath of Fire 1. I rented it once. Uh, it was very ugly in the map scenes, but it had nice combat scenes. What was it on? Uh, Super Nintendo. SNES? Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Otherwise, I'm a baby fresh eyes when it comes to this series. Jim, I know you've played it, right? Um, I wouldn't say that. I used to go um, spend a couple <laughs> weeks every summer with my cousin and we would just kind of just hang out, and I'd watch him play video games. And one of the games that I used to watch him play was Breath of Fire 3. Ah. I never really played it myself, but I've seen it played a lot. I mean, I feel that's that's what I say about most games is like, eh, watch my buddy play it. What about you, Vanessa? Yeah. <laughs> well, I never played a Breath of Fire. Oh, oh me? I only play a little bit of first one. I know even Those two need dad, a spanking. I'm a little baby Ooh, being naughty. I'm not naughty. I'm a good baby. Oh, boy. All right. That's enough. <laughs> Please. Square uh, roots, baby. So make I did play it. I played, and true. I didn't play a ton of these. I played this one, and I have fond memories of it. I played it for a few months, and because, you know, that's how you used to play. What? These days, you just jam through the chunker. That's how I play now. When I was younger, I would play them over the course of several months. Jam through the chunker? That's how I play non-Square Roots games. I, like, yeah. play them, and it takes me two years to finish. Uh, yeah, I like more, I think, challenge-based games, so that kind of, I like to push through them. But also, I'm way more, like, you couldn't look at guides back when I was playing this. Like, GameFAQs was barely a fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, I- but I did I did not finish it. There is a part, and I don't know how far into the game it is, I'm interested to find out, where you have to cross a desert. And there's a trick to it, uh, similar to the Lost Woods type thing. Hmm. There's a there's just a trick to it, and I couldn't figure the fuck out. And there was no fucking fact for it on Game Facts, <laughs> so I finally just quit playing. So there's a couple of different versions too. There's the PSP one, which you can play on Vita and PS TV, and then there's oh, really? the PS One version, which I think Matt uh-huh. is playing. I am playing the PS1 version. What's the difference? I don't know. Whoa. Uh, Maybe. I wonder screen. if they cleaned up the translations or anything like that. I've always liked to play the more recent versions. The one I'm playing is widescreen, so that's one difference. Well, I can't tell the fucking difference of that. What are you playing it on? I am playing oh. it on PS TV. I'm on the Vita. I'm also on the Vita. So I guess we're all playing the... And uh, yeah, it's, uh, so I'm playing the PSP version. I don't know what difference it is. Uh, listeners, if you know the differences, uh, tell us. You know how. Well, anyway, uh, unless anybody had something ex- else they wanted to say about the mechanics or, or, you know, that type of thing so far. No, it's pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. Easy to figure out. You don't out. have yeah. many MPs. You can cast, like, three spells when you start. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. more than a lot of, like, a Final Fantasy game doesn't start you with fucking spells. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Tipo's got Flare, which is really good. Uh, yeah. Ryu's got a heal, and good old Ray is a thief and has a, like, a steal ability, a mug ability. 
Yeah, Tipo had three spells by the time I finished this that chunker. That third one he just had... destroyed the boss. Yeah, same, same, Simone, same. Simone, yeah, that one, yeah, it, it obliterated that boss. Yeah, it did. John, yeah, you did. made such a good point about how this is, an, like, the, now I'm thinking about it, like how it is a Capcom game and how a lot of the animation does look like a Street Fighter game and knowing the kind of types of special attacks and stuff that you get you know, summons and that type of thing that you're going to get. And I remember that's what I loved about the game when I played it is it was so goddamn great looking and it looked like, man, that was such a good point. Let's get back into it. All right. So we go to Bunyan's cottage and he kidnaps us. What? <laughs> well, no, he's Bunyan. My husband's a nice man. Mm-hmm. You go to his cottage and you're starting to look for places to loot. And uh, he comes back. We are terrible. We're supposed to be a lookout. We're bad at it. Yeah. And he he catches us. In the act of robbing his home. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of homoerotic tension between him and Ray, <laughs> the other grown-up. It's pretty uh. funny when he catches you because you you leave, you exit the his house, and he's waiting outside the door, and he just punches you in the head. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, first Ray goes by himself, and mm-hmm. you hear... Yeah, and you hear, like, some yeah, clatter. Ooh, ah, ooh, ee, and, harder. Yeah, and then Tipo goes, and you hear the same thing, mm-hmm. and then your character goes, and you get punched in the yep. head. Mm-hmm. And he ties you all up in a row. Oh, no. And he basically is like, I, people have been kind of hinting that you should be doing good stuff and not bad stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, whenever you go to the weapon store, they're like, have you tried not being an asshole? And you're like, no. <laughs> nah. <laughs> and uh, he's like, well, Ray, how about... Uh, in return for me forgetting all this happened, you go up to Mount Gligus or whatever it's called, and uh, kill this uh, monster that's been attacking everyone and attacking our crops and helping everyone starve. Mm-hmm. And Ray's like, and, "Okey dokes." Yep, Ray. Ray seems real amenable to this, I guess, because he can't beat Bunyan in one-on-one combat. Right, and Bunyan agrees to babysit the garbage orphans. In regards to John's comment about how this was re-released on the PlayStation Portable, the mm-hmm. port features a new title logo graphic Ooh. and was reprogrammed to make use of the handheld's native 16x9 widescreen display. Mm-hmm. An expanded version of the title's fishing minigame is also included. Oh, boy. Which can be shared. Yada, 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 yada. Oh, yeah. I noticed on the menu, one of the options, it's like new game, oh, fucking it. load game, fishing game. Oh, cool. I remember the fishing game in this, too. This is another JRPG with a deep fishing game. It's another thing. I don't remember all of it super well, friends, because I don't remember my teenage years super well. You don't remember yesterday super well. (laughs) It's true. It's a good point. Uh, That's it. Just wanted to to fill in the... Just wanted to to point that out. Thank you, Matt. Now... You're welcome. uh, So... Uh, Ray runs off to Mount Glouse, uh, and meanwhile, uh, Big Daddy Bunyan's like, okay, I'm going to put you two to work. You're going to chop some wood, and you better do it in this time period. And it's a uh, mini game that we'll talk about uh, at the end. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And once you finish cutting wood, you're like, let's go to the mountain and find Ray and help him um, punch that monster up. Mm-hmm. I don't think Ray's super into this idea, but you two are like, well, got nothing else to do, so let's go help Ray. Yeah. Ray makes a comment when you when you do get to the mountain and you find Ray, he makes a comment that like he can't follow through on some plan that he had because you showed up, which is never yeah, explained. It's yeah, it's very vague. He's like, I would be strong enough to beat it by myself if you weren't here. Mm-hmm. Very mysterious. You think he was thinking about bailing? Um, no, no. I think he has some hidden power that he can't show us. Yeah, or something. he goes like feral cats or something like that. Ooh, once that there's there's like TF. One the, there's like furry transformation. Yeah. Well, I guess you've already transformed to and from a dragon. That's true. And I don't know if you want to talk about this in the show now, but the one of the big um one of the big like the big magic attacks in the game is like evolving into like big beefy fucking dragons. And I wonder if spoiler. you can evolve. Yeah. Jeez, well, Matt. Spoiler alert. 
This game's called Breath of Fire, though. I mean, <laughs> you you play as a dragon. I mean, I'm basically telling you that the game has summons. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I wonder if Ray turns into a big beef cat. I don't remember. Maybe hmm. he does. I, actually, I believe that he does. I think he has. You, we can cut this, but I think he has a were tiger form that's or something right. like that. You're yeah. Right. You're right. Yeah. It's oh. that's what it is. It's pretty clear from the dialogue that that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Oh. I All played, right. th- here's the problem with when I play these games on my phone. I play them like on my breaks at work. So it's like, I'm just getting through it. I'm not paying that much attention. So we head to Mount Glouse and there's some like little, little, um, environmental puzzles where you can get some extra treasure. How do we head there? You glossed over a whole bunch. Oh, did I? Well, there's our bullshit mini game. Right. Well, I said we'll talk about that at the end. Okay. I just wasn't paying attention <laughs> then. Oh, it's quite okay. So you did you guys kick over the rocks in the on the mountain no. path? No, you can use if you switch your character to Tipo, he can like there are a bunch of rocks on the path, and you can go kick them over, and some of them have holes underneath that have items. Whoa. in them. Oh, like one of them had like a hundred and twenty zenny in it. One of them had like a vitamin. One of them had like a some kind of coin. Oh. Hmm. Um. And at one point, you can, like, there's a boulder on the edge of this river. Mm-hmm. You can use Tipo, kick the rock out from in front of the boulder, and then it will, like, dry up this this stream that you can walk through. And there's a chest at the end of it with, like, some kind of really good item. I think a sword oh, or something. I someone go back on, and get that I've, stuff. I've been streaming this to the Facebook group, and someone was telling me to go do that, to kick the rock. And I tried all the buttons, but I was, didn't switch to Tipo, so I couldn't do it. It's this, you have to switch to Tipo, and it's the circle button. Well, I'll do that next time. There are a lot of signs around out. that say, please do not hit or kick or bother the uh, natural landscape. Oh. Yeah, you can kick rocks around a bunch and find little treasures and stuff. Thanks for that info, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Ah, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing that the game lets you do is you can manipulate the camera. It's kind of an isometric perspective. Mm-hmm. But unlike uh, a lot of games from this era, you cannot, you do not have full 360 control. You can just kind of tilt it left and right and up and down. It's the worst. I mean, you kind of don't need it, really. So, mm. I just don't like the camera. That's my one problem with the game. But we'll we'll get there. Uh, Ooh, interesting. Okay. So I yeah, I headed up Mount Glouse, and did anyone do the the diving down the sandy hill? Yeah, to get the I did. Treasure? It. I did. Took me way too long. I spent like half an hour doing that. Wow! There's little, there's little marks on the top of the incline that tell you where to, where to slide down at. Well, maybe I'm not as smart as you. <laughs> I think, I think you get a here. You get like some kind of shield and some kind of fishing implement. Mm-hmm. 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 And then, I, uh, and then right after this is where you find the cabin that has Ray in it. Yay. I didn't notice the marks, but I was able to do it by eye because it's really simple. <laughs> I like the uh, the sunset and the birds that show up when it's it's nighttime. It was a nice little effect. Yeah. <sighs> and Ray's inside, and so you're like, well, I guess we can crash here tonight because it's dark. And uh, your crashing is, is kind of interrupted in the morning by the sounds of a hungry monster. Yeah. The Chimera Nu. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And it is a proper Chimera. It's got the head of a lion and the tail of a snake or whatever the heck. It looks like a baboon with a snake tail. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the speaking of the monsters in general, uh, any thoughts on any of the enemies? We have all sorts of... We, like, we kind of glossed over. We fight all sorts of stuff. There's... Eyeball birds, I think. Yeah, and goblins. Oh, the the rippers. They're the goblins they that have blindness. like a boss goblin, and all of the characters have delightful ice cream hair, mm-hmm. including Ryu. <laughs> all the goblins do too. They all have like green hair that just looks like frosting on their heads. It's cute. <laughs> I want to eat them. Aww. So we fight the Chimera new, and he's all yeah, like... Yeah, and it's really easy. Growl. You fight it once here outside the cabin, and it gets injured and runs away. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you follow it to a cave, and it's got a little blood trail in the cave for you to follow. Um, I did By find point, a lot of really good items in the cave. 
Um, I found like some kind of a bent sword. I found some vitamins. I, if you search one of the skeletons, it has two hundred zenny yeah. on it, mm-hmm. which is Died cool. rich. You get a nice yeah. sword or a big knife or something, and mm-hmm. you can pilfer some good equipment too. Like uh, oh yes, from yeah. the chief goblins, you can pilfer I think waistcoats, and those are good oh. armor. I didn't do en- oh. enough pilfering. Did you guys pilfer from the new? Uh, I tried. I think it so, said but I don't remember what was, it had. It said that I couldn't. I steal. was able to do it the first battle. I it, it has a power food, which is uh, an item that permanently raises the power Ooh. of whoever you give it to. Ooh. That sounds good. By now, you should have. Uh, even if you didn't grind, Tipo's got like legit three fucking killer spells, and I think that does Ryu have one by now? He's got he's got heal and protect. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. I use protect constantly because fuck. Yeah, right. he has purify to uh, cure poison. Oh, right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I like that uh, your main character is your your fucking clear is your healer. That's yeah. fun. Mm-hmm. Did we have something else like that that we played recently? Earthbound. Oh yeah, oh, that's right. That's true. Yeah, he does that's heal. Good point. He's your main until you get poo. He's your main healer. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, you make like the all. You can follow the blood trail to get to where you think the the uh, to to a river, unfortunately, or you can go off to the side pass and get uh, extra stuff. But yeah, you get to a river and there's not much you can do. Uh, um, and uh, Tipo's like, well, maybe we can somehow get in the water. mm Hmm. Ray's not super into that idea. Well, because he's a kitty. Yeah. Cats don't like water. You, if you would want Ray to do something, to stop doing something, you spray Ray with uh, with water. The villagers should have just tried that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so you can go, there's another way to get into the river through one of these side passages, and that's where Tipo suggests you jump in the water. Yeah, and then uh, they have a great idea of sending the little mute child to go first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and fortunately, you land right in the cave. And after you yeah, get there, lucky. Ray's like, "What if this didn't work? What would have happened?" <laughs> They're just like, oh, "I don't know. Burp, 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 burp. We're so wacky." I mean, one thing that thing, was really we know what would happen because once you finish this section, you jump back in the water and float the fuck out. Yeah. So what would have happened the... is you would have floated the fuck out down to the bottom of the mountain and been fine. One thing that I did notice about this little sequence is that the little splash animation when they jump in the water looks really cool. It's a really good splash. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like the movie splash. Yeah, that's a really good splash. (laughs) Is that a good movie? Like the movie Lady in the Water. (laughs) I was going to (laughs) say. I always mix up splash and mannequin. So do I. And then mannequin 2 on the move. (laughs) (laughs) Which is the best one. (laughs) <laughs> that's the one where they live in the town and then at the end the twist is that it's really just off the interstate and they're just a bunch of fucking weirdos what? yes that is the end of Mannequin <laughs> 2 where they, as directed by M. Night Shyamalan it's right off the interstate <laughs> <Thank you, John. laughs> so uh, now that you've made it to the secret lair of the new uh, you get there and the new's uh, blocking a door it will not let you through mm-hmm. And uh, you fight the new, and t- with Tipo's new set of destroying spells, what's it called? Samsa Soup? Samus. Yeah, Samus. 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 Samu. It's easy. Mm-hmm. There's, uh, you get flare, and then you get an ice, I think, right? And then you get... Yeah, there's flare, ice, and Samoon. And Samoon yeah, is like Samu's... wind and fire combined? Yeah, yeah. something. And uh, you were re- you destroy this, and it dies standing up. And you're like, well, yeah, the the new like keels over, but like posts itself up in front of the ca- the like back cave entrance, yeah. in and like in a way that is not possible for a dead thing right. to do. But they know it, and um, they're like, oh, it died standing up, like it was trying to uh, protect this cave. And I was like, ah, sweet, there's going to be some great treasure in there. I bet. I'm so excited. And it's just full of dead new babies. Excuse me. What? What? But. It's got cubs, but they're Excuse dead. Excuse me? What? The cubs what? are dead. The The children of the new what? are dead. Are we the monsters? We didn't kill them, but they're dead. Yeah, they And they one talk of the about... characters says that these babies are dead. The new must not have realized it and kept bringing them back food. Excuse me? <laughs> 
<laughs> so the dead mother, Vanessa, was bringing food to its dead children. <laughs> yeah, for uh, presumably weeks, if not months. Yeah, they're desiccated. It's not years. You look at those corpses and they are desiccated. They've been dead for a long, she, all her babies, dead them, for a long time. She brought, them, she brought them the food. And she put mm-hmm. it. John just posted a picture of the dead babies in the group chat, as, like a fucking monster. Next to their cold little bodies, and she mm. nuzzled them and tried to get mm-hmm. them to eat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> probably made like a little like those those crying sounds you heard during the day were probably just the mother just sad that the babies weren't moving. <laughs> this cute game is. Kind of awful. <laughs> Not awful, just <laughs> it monstrous. It is really fucking dark right off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> right off the bat, you start murdering people. You murder these cute animal buddies, and then you find these dead babies. Why did you make me play it? <laughs> <laughs> I hope the game gets a little cheery. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah. All right. And we did it. Yeah, you get. Uh, I I did play just a tiny bit longer where you get down the mountain and then Tipo's like, "Let's go brag to the village and tell everybody what we did." Uh huh. And Bunyan's mm-hmm. like, "Good job." I just want to say, Ray, you can hug me anytime. I mean, it's definitely <laughs> not. Yeah, I mean, the game keeps going here. You jump back into the water once you find the dead babies. Yeah, and float <laughs> down to the bottom, and then you go talk shit to everybody. Like, what's up? And they're all like, "Holy shit!" Like, you're not. I guess you're not useless after all, you <laughs> fucking idiot. Yeah, it's a and great you get scene this, where the like, village surrounds you, and it looks like they're gonna be yeah. mad, but then they're like, "We just wanted to say thank you." Yeah, you get this like little scroll too after you leave the cave of like, and spring came upon the village and everyone was happy. I'm not happy. Get some tomatoes. (laughs) Oh, Vanessa. (laughs) Her kittens. I know. It was very sad. Um, but yeah, there's, and there's promise of a new adventure. Someone has a, a mission they want to set you on, but we'll have to talk about that next time. On, on the Square, Square Roots, Roots Podcast! Hey, John, you have a mini game corner. I do. Let's talk about it. Chopping wood. I also, the, the, I got, like, I think there's some, at least, fishing stuff for sale, but I haven't tried that yet. But I did get What was to- your log count? What was your log count? How many longs did you cut? Uh, quite a few, but, well, it took me a couple of tries. I, I failed the first couple of times, but, uh, by the end, I, I was getting, I wasn't missing it. You have to do pretty well in order for Bunyan to be satisfied. This reminds me a lot of the- I definitely watched you uh, stream that, and it was really frustrating. I'm st- I don't have good timing. I watched you stream as well, <laughs> which then, uh, helped me when I attempted it, so thank you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, Bunyan, Bunyan's a demanding man- but I pleased him in the end. <laughs> Dealing with his big stacks of wood. And, uh, yeah, this was What's a- What's the likelihood that Bunyan's gonna end this game covered in chrism? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm gonna- I wanna find out. <laughs> the, uh, so yeah, that, that, it reminds me a lot of the Grandia deck swabbing minigame from Grandia. Uh-huh. Uh, I hope, I wonder if there's gonna be, cause there's only one mini game in Grandia. It was really weird. I hope this one has lots of little diversions like this. Well, I mean, there's cute. a fishing, there's a whole fishing mini game that's fucking pretty in depth. Hmm. Well. You talk I... about fishing. You could turn it into John's fishing corner if you wanted to. Oh boy. Maybe I will. I'm excited for fishing. Next time on Square Roots, we will be playing Until You Escape Momo's Tower. 
in an unforgettable sequence of escape. All right, guys. Um, before we get to our email, let's talk about what we're squarely against. Ooh. Who wants to go foist? I'll go. Go ahead. Yay. I'm rounding for the pretty sprites. Jonathan. I am squarely against the camera being too zoomed in. It's too zoomy. I want to see more of the map. Uh, let me see more of the map. Vanessa. Yeah, I'm squarely against the room of dead babies. <laughs> <laughs> Which will be our cover art for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> that was the saddest thing I have ever seen in a game that we've played for this show. <laughs> I mean, can we just point out, I just want to point out again, this is a game in which you are found by a man, naked and alone in the woods, and he puts you to bed, but then shortly thereafter, like, that evening steals weapons for you and sends you to mug people, and then drags you along to murder a monster. Yeah, let's talk about that. Folks, if you find a uh, child, uh, naked or otherwise, <laughs> in the woods, uh, passed out, don't just assume that they're an orphan and take them home to do odd jobs for you. Maybe uh, contact the authorities and see who this child belongs to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Also, if you find a dragon that has been encased, encased in Chisholm, uh, maybe <laughs> don't punch it. Just let it, you know, if it's alive, just let it do its thing and get out of its way. I would say even if you adventure. find like a, 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 a chicken recently hatched from an egg, don't punch it. It's true. Don't, don't do a punch. Don't do a punch. Yeah. If you, if you come upon a, a, a naked kid in the woods, just sling that kid over your shoulder and take him home. That's, <laughs> that's your kid now. <laughs> no, call the call the authorities. <laughs> call nope, the authorities. That's your kid, and he's uh, he's uh, one of your like little thief kids now. Consider yourself. He's part, he's, at he's home. part of your gang, Fagin. Consider that's yourself. How it works. Part of the family. All right, is that everyone? Yep. That's Let's everybody. Do it then, because mm-hmm. we got an email. Ooh, I think Vanessa should read this email. <laughs> okay. I, I really. I think it would be yeah. funnier if someone Yeah, okay. actually, I think it would be funnier if someone else did. Who wants to read it? You do it, fucking Jim. Fucking read God it. God damn it, I'll read it. That's your job. This, uh, mm, this email reads, Hello, it's been a few months since Kingdom Hearts 3 was released, and I noticed that the podcast hasn't addressed the additions the game brought to the Kingdom Hearts lore. Thanks to your previous deep dives, and of course your playthrough of the first Kingdom Hearts, I think I've gained a lot of insight, but I still have some questions. Number one, is it possible for Sora to reabsorb Roxas? If not, why not? Can a man ever become a princess of heart? If not, why not? It's 2019. Are there kings and queens of heart? We know that Kingdom Hearts is light. Does that make them princesses of light? Or is that heart that they're a princess of no Kingdom Hearts? What the fuck? Is Disneyland, Disney World, the real-life Traverse Town? Yes. Are gummies organic, or are the parts produced? Who makes them? Thanks for your time. Sincerely, Vanessa. <laughs> the same Vanessa who sits across from all of us right now. G- Jimothy, you missed the PS. Oh, I'm s- oh, excuse me. P.S. When are you going to play Deus Ex? <laughs> 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 all right. Classic fucking callback. Wait, this is whole episode. <laughs> Garbage orphans. What's next? I promise. That's your grandma. That's you. <laughs> okay, number one. Is it possible for Sora to reabsorb Roxas? No. Why not? How do you reabsorb someone, Vanessa? I don't know. How do you absorb someone, much less reabsorb How them? How do you split into two people in the first place? Is it possible? Well, that's unexplainable, but I can't explain how you could possibly absorb someone. I want you to find your closest friend okay. and try to absorb them and see how it Okey goes. Dokes. Uh Number two. Vanessa. Can a man ever become a princess of heart? Can a man ever become a princess of heart? If not, why not? It's 2019. I will say, uh, yeah. Nice. I mean, that's not explicitly stated in the Kingdom Hearts lore, but I would say, yes, it's possible. I don't see why not. Uh, Are there kings and queens of heart? Uh, nope. Obviously. I think that that uh, the princess or princes of heart or princesses would be like 
Uh, that anno- the the dumb guy from Little Mermaid would be a good one. Prince Eric. And uh, the dumb guy who I- – isn't he also named Eric from Cinderella? Mm, I don't think he has no, a name. No, that's Prince yeah. Charming, I thought. Oh, no, okay. I think Charming is Snow White. No, Charming Prince. is Sleeping Beauty. No, it's Snow White. No, oh. Charming is Sleeping no, Beauty. Sleeping Beauty is mm. Philip, for sure. No. Yes. Yeah, yeah I probably, think you're right. You probably know more than I do. <laughs> yeah. It is. I have Prince watched Philip. those movies a bunch. So, yeah, you could. I'd love to see a King but Hearts game where you're playing as Aqua and rescuing the Princes of Heart. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. What a great idea. Aqua's the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, but are there kings and queens of heart? Of course there are. Next question. Yeah, I and mean, one thing, you're playing with the queen of hearts, and you know it's not really smart, but the Joker isn't the only fool who will do anything for you. Oh, okay. Uh, we know- <laughs> I'm a Joker. I'm a Toker. Oh. I'm a midnight poker player. That's how this song goes. So we know that King of Hearts is light. Does that make- them princesses of light or is the heart their princess of not king of hearts is it does that make them princesses of light or is the heart that they're that they are a princess of i feel like it's the heart of each world i feel like yeah yeah the heart of each kingdom oh so while in 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 the totality king of hearts is light they are they are princesses of each world i see that's why Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, is Disneyland slash Disney World the real life Travers Town? No, but Euro Disney is. Oh. Yes, come to the one in Florida. Trust me, it is the real life Traverse Town. It's just nothing but a bunch of transient fucking weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see: Are gummies organic, or are the parts produced? Who makes them? I would say that the. The base uh, elements of the gummy are naturally produced, and then they are formed into spaceship parts by some kind of company. Okay. It's actually uh, mostly like horse bones. Horse bones. Horse bones. That's gelatin, not gummies, John. <laughs> Jesus, you fucking gelatin is horse sick bones. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. You didn't know that legitimately <laughs> gelatin has ground up fucking animal bones in it yes that's what that's what it's made of jim this is just a sad <laughs> animal <death> episode <laughs> you all think that you could eat a gummy ship yeah that i is, would think so that's, yeah that's a good fucking question mm-hmm, yeah. are the gummies edible yeah i would think so but right only in certain provinces and states right now uh not <laughs> everywhere <laughs> what about the last question? When are we going to play Deus Ex? That's a great question. Well, probably not this game. year, but I wish we would. I mean, we could Wait, didn't we? No. No, that we did instant classic uh Oh, for Human Revolution. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, who knows? Yeah, There's yeah, still yeah, one yeah, Vody yeah. episode left or Vody series left, so maybe we'll put it on the the list. Oh, that's a great idea. You know what? That's a good one. We'll add it to the list. I don't know if Vanessa wants to play it that bad, man. I'm fucking on board. Yeah. It's not a long <laughs> game. And it's cyberpunk. I remember it. Alright, well a thank long you game. for the letter, Vanessa. Alright, so I have a letter. It's a it's a voice clip letter. Oh. I'll play it for you all. Okay. Um from Julian oh. from Nerds Without Pants. Oh. I didn't agree to this. Vanessa. Yeah. It is I, Julian Titus. At last the truth can be told. And what's that? I am a ghost. ghost. What you didn't know was a ghost. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, that's right. I was a ghost the whole time. (laughs) There's only one way that I can be laid to rest. And that is for you and John Brandon to do an episode of Sierra Roots. Whoa. While you cook a delicious meatloaf. Oh my goodness. What the fuck? Well, I I guess we got to do an episode of Sierra Roots while we cook a delicious meatloaf. Well, uh, I guess that's possible like this fall. Well, you'll be out. Out, out west and we can we can rent a hotel with with a kitchen <laughs> and record and <laughs> cook meatloaf at the same time 
I, I, it is doable. It is doable. And that, well, we can, f- <laughs> but then will, will we free Julian's spirit or will he return to a living body? What's going to happen? I'm not sure, but uh, maybe hmm. he'll just uh, become a ghost. What we know is a ghost. Oh, well, that makes sense. I have an alternate solution. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's that? Let's, well, let me phrase it another way. You know who to call. We got one! I makes me no feel ghost. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right. We did it. Patreon. 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 Oh, hey, Patreon. John. Patreon John doing the Patreon. So, uh, we got some bonus episodes that if you pay us $3 a month, that's $3. Literally the price of a, a Starbucks. Oh, don't say that. That's a less than the bread. cost of a Starbucks, my friend. Wow. That's, that's too much. That's like the price of a Duncan. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the price of a Duncan. The price yeah. of a Duncan. You can get all like a couple of dozen <laughs> bonus episodes with or a, a new Tim Hortons. If you're, <laughs> yep, sorry, with a new <laughs> with one coming out every month. Uh, episodes hat- premiering monthly. And had a full boyfriend was last month, which I think we, other than some of those game show episodes, might be our best bonus episode ever. Whoa, it's that and Quiet Man. I think I do. Oh, but but the Thanksgiving "Would you eat this bird?" was pretty good. It was great. I just want to, I just <laughs> want to point out that, friends, if you recently listened to a, another podcast about "Had a Full Boyfriend" and found it wanting, mm-hmm. we have a solution for you. Listen to the Square Roots episode by becoming a patron mm-hmm. and help support the show. We are saving up for a big ad. Mm-hmm. Who knows where it'll be? We'll figure that out. Um, we're going to do some research, going to weigh our options, and um, I don't know, maybe help Vanessa get a switch or something. Help Vanessa get yeah. a ding dang switch. I've recently mm-hmm. decided. I Vanessa needed a laptop next. There's need and there's want. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I need a laptop, but what I want is a switch. It's true. <laughs> and uh, for five dollars, you get to vote, and maybe you'll help us play Day Day of Sex, day of which sex. we all wanted to play. We wanted to have a big Day of Sex festival. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. As a five dollar patron, you get to vote, and we are going to do one uh, within the next month or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess we'll have to make sure that Day of Sex is on vote there for us mm-hmm. to day have the Day of Sex. Yes. Mm-hmm. Pay three, pay, pitching us a few dollars, and we could have a day of sex. Ooh. What do you think? What does, hey, Latin speakers, Vanessa, you're probably the smartest one on the podcast. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you know Latin. Translate deus sex machina for me. Uh, deus ex machina <laughs> means a god from the machine, and it is a, um, a plot device often used in plays where uh, a problem is solved by so, god appearing um and uh just sort of magically fixing everyone's issues if you've ever so watched the day uh, of sex machina would be god fucking the machine yes, yes. it would be god from the sex machine <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um if you've ever seen The Stand or read The Stand, that has the maybe stand the biggest- is always the example I use too, because <laughs> the hand of God literally comes down and presses a button on a nuclear device and blows everybody up. That is a up. classic uh-huh. God from the machine solution. Uh, uh-huh. There were also in the Greek uh, tradition of theater, there were many uh, situations where like Zeus would just come down and met out punishment, but uh, in contemporary. Uh, Media, we might look at uh, the return of Luke Skywalker at the end of The Last Jedi. Uh, what about? Ooh. Oh, sure. What about uh, the Avengers movies? There's a lot of Deus Ex Machina. Uh, there. Captain Marvel, certainly, in The Last Battle, would be For an example sure. of a Deus Ex Machina. I was just thinking more anytime Thor shows up. Well, just because you're a god doesn't mean that you're a Deus Ex Machina. And you can be a Deus Ex Machina without being a god. <sighs> What about the frogs at the end of Magnolia? 
I've never seen Magnolia. Oh, then you should watch that before we talk Everyone about that. Everyone says that is, it's good. It is a very good movie. What about the, first of all, that's the opposite of the truth. That movie is garbage. And number two, what about the frogs in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time? And they get all big when you play them songs. That's, that's right. That references is, to other things that we've played. That is a deus ex machina for sure. Because they're so real So there you hot. go, ladies and gentlemen. God having sex with frogs. We figured it out. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, uh, another thing we do is when you support us, we t- say your name at the end of the episode and we will until it gets too long and we can't do it anymore. But we it's th- are almost <laughs> at a hundred fucking patrons. It's yeah. too long, but we are going to have to do it forever now. I love it. All right, I Jim. I hope it gets up to a thousand and we still have to read it and we'll hate it. <laughs> Let me kick us off here. Um, Joseph Tom Hardman. <laughs> George Brady, <laughs> Devin Sloan, <laughs> Sue Steele, Ron, Ross Disney, Sue, Sean Gonzalez, Ron. Um, Vanessa's mom, Majora's Mask, or We Riot, Cyril the Wolf, D. Jethro, Kyle, Vanessa's fourth DJ mom, <laughs> John Kissick. Fine, say everyone's name, at least it annoys Matt. See? Cameron Show, Stephen Croc, Andrew Granieri, Label Sack. We also would love to thank Jason. Chris Benyak, Jared Collins, T. Bumpkins, Florian Jonas Kramer, Owen Marble, Sean Walsh, Wash in the Wind, Kevin Shipley, Andy Best, Worcestershire Sauce, Trendy Beef Setter, ooh, they changed it, <laughs> Eric Garby, Vanessa's Mom, Jonathan Ellsworth, Pilot the Ava, Matt, or Jim will have to. God damn it. <laughs> Galindo, PJNs, Benjamin Avner, Wonder Swan, Bobby Midkiff, Justin Benoit, Rusty Kamada, Tom, and Julia Zanella. Miguel Torres, Zachary Davis, Nawford, Reddit is Harold Lauder, Nofford. Jordan O'Boyle, Andy M. has slain the father of Patrick W. Bears, who is secretly two koalas in a trench coat, and Naked Orphans is not a good way to start an RPG. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Dickerson, James Hostetler, stop History looking at me like that, Huxley Iguana, Nathan Poirot, <laughs> Tracy Tanoff, Ashley T, Randy Pierce, Megan Sullivan, Kiva Moser, Brody Toy, Samu Mitchell, Jonathan Lee, Aaron Bachman, Brian Stone, Robert M. Pullum, Brady A. Berman, Ba Weep Granan Weep Nini Bong, Breegerth. <laughs> God! <laughs> I love that reference. Robert T, Ross Hartley, Brian Pitt, Tyler Perry's Medea Disc 3 Crazy, Justin Ham, <laughs> War Childress, Julian Titus was a ghost the whole time, Dr. Steve Stone, Gregory G. Bailey, Just Jerry, Mary, Queen of Scoffs, Jameson, Michael Crawford, Mishi Draws, Matt Jorgensen, Race Jenkins, Jim's Appendix is not a fan of David Shook. It's true. We did it. All right, everybody. That's it for this episode of Square Roots. Feel free to send us an email that we can read on air. You can reach us at squarerootspodcast at gmail.com. Come see us at our Facebook group, the Square Roots Podcast Group, for smart, cool, very attractive people. Or you can tweet at us. We are at Square Roots Pod. Thanks to Stephen Morris for his covers of Country Living, Can't See You Clearly Now, and Cedar Woods. Please check out Stephen Morris's EPs, Relaxin, a five-track EP of relaxing Nintendo music, Mega Buster, a five-track EP featuring music from the first five Mega Man games, Cries of the Planet. A nine track album featuring Final Fantasy VII music, Forest VGM, an 11 track album featuring Forest video game music, the majority from classic RPGs, and Summer VGM, a 12 track album featuring Summer video game music. Links to these, as well as his Twitter, Patreon, and YouTube, are in the show notes. Please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts, you sexy f- friends. Johnny, you said that you weren't going to slide into the listeners' DMs. <laughs> Come get your man. He's lost in my DMs. Johnny likes to wait until you slide into his DMs. My what? <laughs> my DMs. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, everybody, for Square Roots, I am Jim Banks. I'm Matthew Van Zant. I am Johnny Brandon. And I'm Vanessa. Bye. Bye. Bye.
I was pretty sober when I started this episode. And and how are you now? Rest. Look at where we're at now. What a journey. <laughs> what a journey. Let's go on separate ways. Don't stop. Believe Wait, separate ways, journey. I got to the This time on Square Roots. When magical beings die, their bodies slowly transform into the ore known as Chrism. Chrism? Even the legendary dragons, whose might shook the world, have in death become a source of energy in the form of Chrism. <laughs> 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 no one knows how or why the mighty dragons became extinct. <coughs> this tale probably because is, of all that chrism. This tale is dedicated to the dragons. <laughs> They're letting all that chrism go to waste. Breath of Fire <laughs> Three. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, John! I leave in the jokes. Yeah, I'm laughter here. I'll, I'll put that at the end. <laughs> That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to do it clean again for you? So nope, it's no, easier I'll, to I'll, edit. I'll, oh no, it's okay. no problem. Okay, okay. It's easy to isolate your track. Oh. Yep. <laughs> He's still ahead, Matt. He's vaping. That's the f- vape. Oh. <laughs> My goodness. Now they'll never know what flavor it is because I beeped that out. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> it was watermelon. <laughs> you should you should just like cover over it and say watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is Matthew raising his hand? Yeah. Matthew? Someone call something on to me, say. please. Will someone please call on me? Matthew. Matthew. Thank you. <clears throat> is that it? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> the port- Very insightful, Matthew. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this episode of Jim. Square Roots. Yeah. Where are we playing to next time? That's what I was just going to get to. Um, Jim. Next time, we're going to play Until We Kill Garth in the Angel Tower. Oh, I hope Garth isn't an innocent father just trying to feed his dead children. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if that's every boss in this game? Probably yeah. Garth is going to be more interested in just trying to protect Wayne, and this is going to be a real tragedy. Oh, no. <laughs> But maybe we'll get to listen to some Bohemian Rhapsody. Well, we'll we'll uh, behead <laughs> Garth, and there's just uh, blood fountains of Wayne. <laughs> you, you 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 defeat Garth, and you go into the room behind him, and there's just a dead Wayne on the floor that Garth has been trying to feed French fries to for the past two weeks. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh man! All right, guys. Um,